Well, hello, friends. <coughs> <coughs> hello and welcome, dear viewer, to another strange video. I don't know, today we're talking about this small little Visual Studio Code extension that I've done. And I know this is a video mainly intended for the Serenity OS community, but it doesn't matter if you're here and you don't know anything about Serenity. So if you don't know anything about Serenity OS and the Serenity OS project, um, I strongly suggest you check out the links in the description or maybe yeah, I'll, I'll put some stuff on screen. Anyways, an issue that I address with this specific Visual Studio Code extension and the stuff that is in the extension that isn't specific to the extension is um, syntax highlighting for Serenity OS's domain specific languages. More specifically, we have two domain specific languages we use in developing Serenity OS applications, and that is the IPC and the GML language. So IPC stands for the inter-process communication, and this is a way of specifying endpoints for our inter-process communication protocol. And we have GML, the graphical markup language for creating GUI application layouts. Those, of course, are newly invented formats. You might be able to see a sneak preview down here in this extension readme that you will be able to see on the Visual Studio Code marketplace. Um, but let's go into the actual file. This is what um, a more involved IPC endpoint looks like. So starting with IPC, of course, we have these endpoints and these endpoints, and they specify a way of communicating between processes. Um, as through, of course, inter-process communication. That's what it says on the box. So if we look at another thing, this would be the lookup server, which is quite a lot simpler. That's why I chose it. Um, it only has the ability, of course, to look up a name and an address. That's what lookup server does, and that's how clients connect to it. And if we look into the compiled code, which is lookup server endpoint, and if you're looking for this code yourself, of course, you have to compile the system and it will be in the build directory. This is the 32-bit build, but I'm guessing that the 64-bit build should basically be the same, at least in the case of compiled IPC things. And, and people more knowledgeable with the IPC system can please point out any issues there in the comments. Anyways, if we look at that, we will have some message IDs and we will have a bunch of like decoding work here and blah, blah, blah. And it looks at some magic values. And this is all like, yeah, um, generated code that is generated by the IPC compiler, which we're looking at now. And this is just um, a normal code generator. So uh, what you're looking at here is just like some, some simplification of a lot of complicated C++ code. And my syntax highlighter already supports a lot of features or supports basically all the features we have right now. There's the ability for endpoints to specify magic numbers like here. And actually it could be any attribute. So I could write hello here and it will still work. So it isn't specific to being magic here. And you can actually type in anything back here going back to the Windows server because it has a lot more functions and we have support for a lot of different types or basically all the types that I could find being used. Also, we have support for a single attribute in these types. So the only attribute you have right now is specifying a string as being UTF-8, um, which we do here, for example, and basically everywhere where we use strings, at least in the Windows server, basically everywhere. Of course, we also format the return types. Um, yeah, it's just a very nice thing to have and this will immediately break if you mess up your formatting of your IPC file. So that's a nice bonus. Let's move on to GML. GML, the graphical markup language is a bit different, although of course it's still C++ inspired syntax. It's markup for creating widgets. And actually, as opposed to IPC, we actually have GML formatting in Serenity itself. So let's go over to my Serenity QEMU build that's running here. This is a 64-bit build, so maybe some things will break. I hope not. So here we are in the GML playground, and I've prepared some example GML here. And yeah, so you can see that it already supports formatting. In fact, if I look into the text editor, 
and go into the syntax tab here, you could see that it also supports TML. So I could type something like grief frame here as well, and it will also format it appropriately. Um, and of course, in the GML uh, playground, you can immediately see when I change something um, here. I don't know if I put in a bunch of spaces, it should probably move it. This is awesome. I should and I should be able to type there. You can see it immediately updates, but that's just a normal GML play playground feature. But what you can also see is that this is actually not the most advanced formatter. It just takes everything after the colon, so all of these attributes back here, as a single token that it, you can double click. So if I want to like only select the 24 here, because I think that's quite a large right, right margin you can see here, um, I can't do that because it will always select the entire thing like yeah that's that's the x shape thing we have to do this actually makes my code syntax highlighter a bit more advanced than the um than the gml formatter we have here so at least with how far this thing highlights i am fully compliant let's go back to vs code and we can see that um, it formats everything um, of course in this case i have the ability to actually double click the margins in these arrays and there's a bunch more um, sensitive formatting so that's very nice and just a sneak peek at how gml works if we look into the demo wizard dialog which actually um, uses this page uh, you might be able to see that it uses the load from gml function which is just a widget function um, that will load the thing will pass the thing into JSON and then load it from the JSON and the JSON simply will instantiate all of the necessary classes and set all of their necessary properties. It also works with a lot more complicated GML files like this demonstrational sliders um, tab that we have in uh, some GUI demonstration application I believe. Um, you see everything is correctly formatted so that's basically all I have for you here. Um, so this is an extension. It's freely available on both the Visual Studio Code Marketplace for Windows Visual Studio Code, as well as on the um, OpenVSX Marketplace, which is for the open source version, or like, yeah, I think the Linux version at least of Visual Studio Code, so you can get it anywhere. So this, of course, is a VS Code extension which means that it will only run in VS Code and maybe a couple of other IDs. But the grammar that I used to write this syntax highlighting, it is actually written in the normal text made JSON grammar. So most to, I would say, all IDEs and text editors support text made grammar. So if you want to create another um, syntax highlighting package for a different IDE that um, uses the exact same grammar, you could go ahead and do that. This is licensed under MIT, so you're also allowed to do that and I would also encourage you to do that because uh, maybe then we can finally get Andreas to not complain about not having syntax highlighting for IPC and GML in C Lion. Yeah, that's something that you could do. But that's all I have for today. Until next time, goodbye.